Hey, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to look at the software Nagios and how you can use it to monitor the system state of your amplets. So we just released a new template which actually comes pre-configured with Nagios here. And maybe you're familiar with Nagios, it's actually a very widely um, used software that a lot of people use to monitor different services, different virtual machines or just different physical machines um, to see what their usage is. Um, if they're still up and um, check different services on these machines. So to get started, let's just quickly create an antlet with a new template and then we can deep dive into what Nagios does and how it can help you monitor your infrastructure. So for that, I'm just going to create a new antlet here, which I'll call Nagios Monitor. The template is of course going to be the Nagios LXC template. For system um, specs, we can just go with 2 gigs of RAM and 2 vCPUs. That all looks good. Create Antlet. And once that's done... Alright, once that's done, we're just going to quickly start it up so it has some time to start up in the background. So the way Nagios works is it gives you a web interface where you can actually um, quickly check all the services that you have defined and configured as monitor. So to do that we want to configure port forwarding rules so we can easily access um, our web interface. To do that we're just going to use the port 8014 on this um, Nano's IP and forward that to the monitor at IP 80. Enable that rule, save the configuration, and that should be it. Now let's see if we can access that IP with that port and actually visit our Nagios web interface. That looks good, it's now asking me for a login. So the default login with that template is just Nagios admin and the password is Ansel. All that's going to be uh, written down in the documentation so you don't have to worry about that right now. And once I've logged in, I'm basically are presented with the Nagios core web interface. From here, we basically have two very important links for now. So we have the hosts and we have our services. Uh, for now, we're just gonna focus on the services part. And the way it works is that you have a host, which in this case is pre-configured the uh, local host here, and you have services for that host that you can monitor. So for example, we have HTTP, we have a ping, and we have an SSH. And we're gonna focus on these three to monitor a different antlet. So when we go back into our um, Antlet section here, we can see that we have a WordPress antlet and a GitLab antlet. And I want to monitor the state of the WordPress antlet, and I want to also be able to monitor if there are any new WordPress updates available. So we're going to focus on configuring services to monitor the WordPress antlet, and also install a new plugin which will allow us to monitor if there are any WordPress updates available. For that, we'll need to SSH into um, our Nagios antlet and actually configure the service for that. So the thing that we need to know is the IP of our WordPress antlet right here. And then let's switch back into our Ansel SSH session here. So I'm SSH onto the Nano that I'm working on. And now I'm just gonna type SSH and the antlet Nagios IP address, which was 10.1.1.14. And that will bring me to the Nagios. Um, SSH session. So from here, we can go into the Nagios directory, which is under user local Nagios etc. And here are all the configuration files that we need to specify our services. We can look at the default uh, configuration file for the local host to get an idea of what that looks like. So we can just do vim objects and localhost.config. And this gives you a very basic setup of what the configuration file could look like. First, we're going to start by defining a host, which will be um, our WordPress antlet. And then for that host, we can define different services. And those are here. So for each service, we can actually define one of those service objects with a different um, service check command. So here we can check the ping, we can check the local disk usage, we can check the local users, and so on and so forth. We've actually created a template that is specifically tailored to the antlet so that you can basically just copy and paste, update the IP address, um, and you're ready to go. And we're going to use that right now. So I'll just create a new file in the objects uh, directory here, 
say touch wordpress.config and then let's open the WordPress file and just copy and paste the um, config that we have right here. So that's the default config. I'm just gonna um, copy all of that out. Or we'll need to open that with text edit here. Let's copy that over and paste it in here. So, and now you can see the basic definition um, of the Antlet service. So here we have our host definition. That would be, first of all, the host name, the alias and the address. That's important so Nagios knows where to check um, for the Antlet. As host name, we're just gonna say um, that's called WordPress. As alias, we can just write it in the proper way. And the address, if you remember, is 10.1.1.11. So the, all we need to do is basically replace the host name here with the actual host name of our antlet. So we can do that real quick. We have the host name uh, WordPress for the entire services or for all the services. Let's just do that real quick. And also the last one. That is actually the plugin that I was talking about that we're going to use to check for WordPress updates. So let's take a closer look at what we actually just defined. Say that real quick, and then uh, scroll back to the top. So first of all, we're defining our host. The host is going to be a Linux server, so we have different services for that Linux server. The host name is going to be WordPress, and the alias is also going to be WordPress. The address is the IP address of the antlet right here. So 10.1.1.11 is the IP address of our antlet, WordPress. And then we have different services for that applet. So we're, for example, here we want to check the ping, we want to check SSH, and we want to check HTTP. And we're basically defining these three very, very basic services. You can add more services as you go along or as you need them. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick with these three services to make sure that we can ping the applet so it has a network connection, SSH in so that it's running properly and allows SSH connections, and check HTTP so we can make sure that the web service is also running. And then we have the additional check down here with uh, which we check for WordPress updates. That's actually a plugin that you can find right here. So let's quickly go to that website um, to see how that works. With that plugin, basically all we need to do is define the command and define the service, which we've done in our basic configuration. If you can see that right here, maybe put that side by side. So we have our service and we have our command. And we also need to install the check WordPress update command in the actual executable file of our Nagios antlet. And we also need to place the check version or WordPress version PHP into the WordPress installation. So for these two things, we're going to switch to an FTP client. And my favorite FTP client here is Transmit. So I've already downloaded the entire GitHub archive. And what I now need to do is go into my Nagios um, in my Nagios monitor here. Go into the directory, so that was user, where is it? User local Nagios and the lip execute. There we go. Copy over my check WordPress update. And now I need to go back into my WordPress installation, my WordPress antlet. The installation is under bar www.html. That's the root file or the root directory of my WordPress installation and copy over the WordPress version PHP in here. All right, so now we've basically pre-configured everything. We're now um, making sure that we have the right files in the WordPress antlet and the right files in the Agios antlet. The only thing we need to do now is actually to make sure that the configuration file gets loaded. To do that, let's switch back to the terminal here and quit the installation, or quit um, Vim here. And now, since we've created that WordPress config, we need to go back into the main config and make sure that's actually loaded. So we just want to edit the Nagios configuration file itself and add a new config file just right here. So I'm going to copy and paste that, nope, copy and paste that line here, which didn't work. Why didn't it work? 
copy paste. Now it worked. <laughs> um, and make sure it loads the WordPress config file that we just created. All right, once that's done, all we need to do is restart Navios. Service Navios, restart. And then head back to our right interface here. It may take some time for all of the checks um, to actually appear, but as soon as we restart it and reload the page, you can see now that we not only have a local host, but also a WordPress host. And for that WordPress host, we have our HTTP service, we have the WordPress update service, and we have the ping and SSH service. You can see here it's now called my WordPress install. That might be a bit generic, but it's for me just basic uh, a blank install. But you can change that name in the configuration file to anything you like. So for example, if we go back into object WordPress config, you can see the service description right here, and that's what you want to change. So we could change that to my awesome WordPress and then for example. Quickly remember to restart Nadia so that the changes take effect. And then, again, just quickly reload. And now you can see it's called my awesome WordPress template. Now you can see that the next um, check is actually scheduled um, at a later time. So we may need to wait a few minutes for it to actually load up. But once that's done, it'll give you either OK, green status, if all the services are working as expected, or it'll give you a red critical status if something is not working as expected. And then you could kind of build on that and configure Slack notifications or email notifications to let you immediately know as soon as something goes wrong. And with that, you can basically configure any monitor you'd like. You could configure Linux uh, monitors, you can configure um, Windows monitors, whatever operating system you have. And you could also do that across machines. The only di uh, disadvantage we have right now is that once my Nano dies, the, nano, uh, the monitor dies with it. So ideally, I would have a monitor on a different physical machine and only monitor, for example, another Ansel I have running. That way, we could, for example, use an Ansel 1XD to host our main production services and then use an Ansel Nano to monitor the Ansel 1XD with the Nyakis endlet running. Obviously, the specifics um, highly depend on your specific setup, but you can add as many plugins as you like and build a as complex monitor as you need it for your specific service. All right, I hope you learned something here. Um, we're gonna put all of the files that we used into the documentation. You can look that up under docs.ansel.com. If you have any questions, feel free um, to comment the video, share the video, and. See you in the next one.